okay all right so uh we will pray first and then we will get into our uh, time of study mm, so we'd just like to request someone to lead us in a word of prayer anybody yes yes it can go ahead father we come to the throne of grace lord thank you for this day thank you for this session lord whatever we are going to learn in this prayer and in this session class lord let it be used for the kingdom expansion and our faith to be built up strong lord whatever you have kept or whatever future plans you have lord let it be fulfilled in not in our way but in your way lord thank you for this hour what lord we are going to spend lord thank you for this time lord wonderful time thank you for all the privileges you have given to us in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you sitkeno uh, so uh, in the last session we talked about the people who are lost and praying for them we focused more on that um, in the last two sessions in fact and uh, today we are going to look at praying for the city and why that is important um praying over cities regions and nations so we kind of you know build on on uh, that aspect of prayer uh, and uh, apart from you know learning these new things a session our uh, first section of what we had dealt with uh, in prayer and intercession was uh, more about developing ourselves personally in prayer uh, and i really hope that you know we are able to do that and we're able to grow set aside time uh, also now that we've understood what are all the things that god wants us to pray for why are we praying in a certain manner you know what is the basis what is the scriptural basis how can we engage in prophetic prayer uh, go ahead and practice it go ahead and uh, you know uh, spend time with god apply uh, and uh, really develop yourself in that because it's very valuable it's really really valuable something that we learn in this journey and we can continue using it throughout our uh, walk with the lord so i want to encourage us to not take it as a, a, a theoretical uh, class where we know okay why why should we intercede yeah god wants a person to stand in the gap and intercede yeah but then to really uh, know that we are that one person that who can who can stand in the gap and pray for uh, people we can pray for others we can pray for our family so uh, whatever we are learning as children of god and also ministers i'm sure we'll serve in some way or the other you know the kingdom of god so when we apply it and we incorporate it into our lives it really bears fruit it really strengthens us so i i just want to encourage us to not leave it as theory but uh, to truly apply it now going to chapter 18 which is on page 67 um we are talking about praying over cities regions and nations why should we pray over cities now increasingly um we are noticing that a lot of people are choosing to live in cities and this is a pattern throughout the world you know there are studies about uh, uh, how cities are expanding how cities are becoming crowded as um, uh, you know people from villages and smaller towns are coming in to find work uh, more people are getting educated the suitable jobs are available in cities so there's a lot uh, about growth of cities you know migration to cities that we will uh, learn about everywhere you know even if it's it, we're not just in terms of missions but uh, even generally you know when we talk about uh, uh, marketing or like i come from a health background so we used to talk about oh cities this is how you plan your public health measures and all that because it's very important what's happening in the cities is very very important okay it affects a lot of people and there are influential people there they can take it back to wherever they came from so cities in that way uh, are are a, a key for uh, many things that go on in the world even in uh, the word of god we we see that you know god speaks to cities god considers cities a lot of work which was done uh, particularly in the book of acts you will see that 
Paul and his team, they will try to choose cities. They'll go there. They'll preach the gospel. You know, they'll establish churches because the impact was was large. So th that's a little bit about cities and why they are important and all. Now God looks not just as uh, at us as individuals. We've seen that He considers families. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He's a God of families. He's a God of generations. Okay, so. In God's way of looking at us, all these things come in. He will look at us as individuals, deal with us as individuals, deal with us as families, deal with us as generations. He also deals with us as city. Okay, when we belong to a city, He looks at us as that community. We are belonging to the city. So God's dealings uh, have to be understood. God has a heart. For cities and nations, he wants people. In other words, what does it mean to have a heart for the city? God wants people to know Him. God wants people to experience of the blessings that Jesus has bought for us through uh, uh, His work on the cross. So everybody must experience it, isn't it? And it's not to say that oh, God wants only the city people to be saved and not uh, people from other places. It's not like that, uh, but. You notice that there is a special focus on the cities because it tends to influence a larger uh, population, and uh, uh, you know that there is greater opportunity for things to move out of the city and impact you know uh, uh, villages and all that, rather than the other way around. So God has a heart for cities. God has a heart for uh, you could also say communities. God has a heart for regions. God has a heart for nations. Uh, now the things that go on in a city, it's not like God is not aware. God is very much aware. Uh, the first incident where God is talking about cities uh, is seen in Genesis chapter 18 when Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, they were cities uh, that allowed, um, you know, uh, homosexuality, sexual immorality, all those things were going on. There was sin basically in the cities. And it really hurt God's heart that people were living whichever they, way they wanted. They did not honor him. They did not live for God. And that came up before God. And then God has this conversation with Abraham uh, when God reveals to Abraham that he's going to destroy the sinful cities. And we know, we learned about intercession from there, right? The way Abraham talks on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, to God to uh, not destroy them. So he intercedes for these places. But unfortunately, even the minimum that Abraham comes to and says, okay, if there are so many people, then uh, I hope you won't destroy the city. It was very unfortunate because God, though he agreed, th th there was no option. The place was so sinful that he had to uh, go ahead and judge these cities. So that's where we... we uh, uh, study about the dealing or uh, dealings of God with a particular uh, set of cities. Then later on, you know, there are many such instances, only a few we are looking at right now. Nineveh. Okay, Nineveh is another place in Jonah, in the book of Jonah, where God talks to um, Jonah and asks him to go to this place called Nineveh. Again, what was the issue with Nineveh? Their, their hearts were far away from God. Their lives were far away from God. So God cared about them, isn't it? Even in Genesis 18, God cared. That's why he listened to Abraham when Abraham was trying to negotiate to protect the city. God cared about Nineveh. Uh, 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 you know, people who are far away from God. And yet, what did God want to do? God wanted to send a man. He wanted to send Jonah and said, Jonah, you go there. And Jonah knew how evil these people were. Uh, and yet look at this God. You know, He wants me to go and he wants me to minister to such people. And Jonah was the one who was resisting it. But did God have a heart for the city? Did God have a heart for the evil, sinful city? Very much. In fact, God, uh, you know, the moment they repented, we see that Jonah goes, he preaches the message, they repent. And you know, God changes His mind towards the people. You know, the judgment is is sort of uh, uh, not the way He told Jonah. 
Jonah is very upset. He says, "What is this God? One moment you say you will judge the city, and the next moment you are blessing these people. People will think that I am a fool." So Jonah takes it very personally, and he gets upset with God. But then, you know, you look at the way God is dealing with the city, the sinful city. He cares about the people, you know. And God talks to Jonah, and he says, "Look, these people, they don't know what, uh, you know, their right hand from the left hand." why should i not care for such people they don't know what they are doing so they need to hear the message that i have saved them and that is why i have sent you here so of course at that time he was not preaching jesus but he was preaching about um, you know them repenting and uh, give, uh, turning their hearts towards god but we know ultimately god was trying to draw the people to himself so we see that god has a caring heart for the cities god sees the sin he notices the sin it upsets him and yet does god really want to protect the city does he want to forgive the city yes he wants to so we he's trying to make a way in every uh, uh, you know instance here uh, to uh, save the people okay one more uh, passage we can look at is luke 19 when he looks at jerusalem and he feels so bad uh, and he says you know jerusalem uh, you did not even understand the day of your visitation so you know all these things will happen you will face the consequences of not uh, yielding to me so what was god's heart for jerusalem he was upset he was sad that these people are not responding so god has a heart for cities he's looking at every city does he know what's going on yeah does he know about the sins the some of the terrible sins that are uh, taking place in these cities yeah he already knows is he making a way is he raising up men and women to minister to cities and towns he is he is does he feel bad if cities don't respond he does so you know we we see that god has a heart for the people okay uh, and uh, uh, in scripture we are also encouraged as god's people to pray you know pray for uh, in jeremiah 29 7 we have seen this was earlier too where god told the people pray for the city where i have taken you you pray for them why when we pray for the city what happens god's blessings we want the blessings of god to be released on the city so god wants us to pray for the city right and we are god's people we are his representatives we are the ones who exercise that authority right we open the uh, we open up our mouths we bless we we release you know those prophetic words we speak the declarations of god and what are we really doing you know we are bringing that blessing upon the city so god told the people you pray so that you can bless the land where you are living uh, and we are the agents who can do that because we carry his uh, spirit and his authority and god told that whenever we turn to god and when we seek him no matter how the land is you know second chronicle 714 again a very familiar passage which a lot of people use for prayer for intercession for fasting where god says you know if my people who are called by my name uh, if you would humble uh, humble yourselves and seek my face turn from your wicked ways i will hear from heaven i will heal your land or i will heal your city. so see god is in a way he's giving a long rope and he's saying okay you know if you repent if you turn back if you seek me then i will not only bless you he's telling his people but i will also bless the land where you are dwelling so what does it mean bless the land it means blessing on the lives of the people it means blessing in our economy it means blessing on uh, you know anything that we are engaged in if it is you know agriculture uh, yeah there is a blessing on that blessing on the families blessing on the education in every way god's blessing will come upon our land you know diseases will be removed so god is saying look i really want to bless and similar to what we said ezekiel if you stand in the gap if you seek me for uh you know whoever is standing in the gap for your city i will bless you that's what i want to do and i'm telling you to pray so that i can do it so you know, god wants to bless the entire land he wants to bless the entire city you could say he wants to bless the entire nation that is god's heart 
and you no know, it is god who is engaged in the rise and the fall of the nations at 1726 it says you know even the boundaries of nations they are kind of uh, they are uh, known by god okay and god is aware which kingdom rises and which kingdom comes down he is aware about everything so we see that god is aware about all things and at the same time you know god has a heart to draw people to himself but unfortunately when the cities move into uh, uh, you know they move away from god people live however they like and it's so sad right like when when we talk about certain cities we can also recognize what are the things that go wrong in that city okay or what are the places in that city where you should never go because evil things take place there so it's very unfortunate but this is how uh, you know uh, some places have become and uh, that is like opening up the door for you know the consequences uh, that a city might face but on the other hand if we pray uh, and if we see city transformation uh, then you know we can trust that the blessing of god will be real in each and every city so these are just some insights for us to understand about cities about god's heart for cities and how uh, you know he really wants to work with them so now that you know we are part of a city is it okay to see till now we said pray for your family pray for the church pray for the set of believers which is all biblical is it biblical to pray for the city if we take time you know one prayer point we say okay i am going to pray for god to bless bangalore that's the city that i am from is it biblical very much right i can pray for the city i can pray for the needs of the city i can pray for the community uh, communities that exist in the city you know so on and so forth so i remember um there there is this uh, um program uh, it's called the secret place okay the secret place i uh, i think apc in bangalore they did it for some time where there used to be intercession and worship in the night and also um uh, particularly for the city there will be many prayer points that people will pray through and then later on it was uh, adopted into the missions program where uh, we would also go and pray in other cities so i i was part of a few of these sessions one was in mysore i remember one whole night we prayed for mysore and uh, there were a lot of points which we had worked on uh, for mysore so basically things like um, you know uh, what are the areas that are doing well okay let's continue pray that it will continue to do well and what are some of the the challenges in the city you know if if there's some um, uh, challenges i mean i don't want to be specific because all this is being recorded uh, but yeah you understand right so whatever issues are there in the city uh, those were listed out so we specifically we prayed uh, okay these things are happening so let us pray that god will uh, change this and people's hearts will turn around and i remember once we had this all night prayer in varanasi where we had listed out okay these are all the specifics to do with varanasi and you know that region let us pray okay let us ask god to intervene in these matters so it was very very focused to bless the city and for god to move upon the city so in that way you know we can engage in prayer god might also reveal to us there are all uh, I, i'm sure when you study about missions you would have come across um, a lot of resources there are organizations that also map cities okay uh, where uh, they can help us understand what are the different communities that are uh, dwelling over there uh, what is their belief system like uh, and you know how to pray for these communities so all that we can understand mainly to pray because the scripture does tell us that we must pray for for our city the groups that live in our city the communities that dwell in our city uh, uh, and uh, you know just go ahead and uh, trust that god will do a mighty work in our city um, yeah so there's an encouragement in our notes here where it says that uh, um, as you as god puts the city on our hearts maybe god might say something like uh, okay uh, i am also more specifically calling you to pray for your own workplace or it could be you know your own set of friends in in college or it could be you know you're working in an it park 
maybe that entire it park god just gives you a burden and says okay you pray for all the people who work here um so just be sensitive to that you know how do we how we want to we want to bless the whole city you know we want to preach the gospel to the whole city we want revival to uh touch the whole city yeah that's true but then god might put you know small little uh spaces on our hearts and, and say why why can't you start praying for this unit first okay and that is something we can all do maybe our apartment complex god says okay why don't you start praying that you know people will come to know uh come to know me that there will be Uh, those who come and sow the seed of God's word in their hearts, people will be healed. They will see the glory of God. So, whatever God puts on our hearts, even if it is for like a small group, we can begin to uh, start there. Let's start there, and uh, God might show you. I've heard of testimonies where people just start with prayer, and then later God opens doors where they have they've had Bible studies, uh, and those Bible studies have become, uh, you know, quite large and become ministries also. So we don't know. We don't know which way God will lead, but we are only here to obey what God is telling us to do. So if God puts a small community or a group or a unit on our hearts, the right thing to do would be to start praying. Okay, for that, and then trust God to lead us further. So in this manner, you know, God uh, works on all of our hearts, and you know, as we pray, uh, God's desire for the city will be fulfilled. All right, um, yeah. So that's a little bit more that that we've understood about the city. One more aspect that uh, I want us to understand is, um, like in scripture. we see that some cities responded to what god was doing like nineveh we just saw that when jonah went he preached they responded but god was so upset with jerusalem and he said jerusalem you do not recognize the day of your visitation you were so caught up in your own uh, life that you did not recognize what i was trying to do in your midst so we we see that you know there is a response required from cities there were certain cities that responded really well even when you read the book of acts you know ephesus there there is all kinds of worship going on but when paul goes he does the ministry then later on you see so many people come and they they um, you know they uh, people who uh, at, at that time you know they were making certain idols of of a, a um, deity but they all came they burnt them and uh, you know there was a revival basically in that city where the hearts of the people were turned towards god so that's what we call a revival so uh, a city like ephesus it's all a revival and there are other such places we can look at whenever the word of god went there there was a response required and some cities had that response where they put their trust in god but then you know, there were others they did not really care about it god uh, wanted to do a work but they were resistant it's unfortunate you know when jesus was also doing his work uh, ministering he went to some towns and he said i can't do here because of their unbelief he could not do much because of their unbelief and he just left that place so collectively what's happening in that place in that region people's hearts are far away from god okay so the response is not a right response which the city is giving so god expects a response from the cities and wherever the, there there was good response there was uh, repentance and turning towards god um, we know that you know there was a revival or you know god's blessing came upon that land then we also notice that god sent people to prophesy over cities so even today we might hear certain people bring a word from god over a city or over a region it's there in scripture you know, you, uh, you read you know, Jer uh, jeremiah he says okay jerusalem talking to god's people so god has a word for the city god has a word for cities okay uh, and uh, that also is something that we observe so i'm just kind of i i know it's not connecting everything is not flowing as such what i'm sharing with us but i'm just giving us a picture about you know uh, what cities are like and what god's heart is for the cities what and all we see in scripture 
with regard to cities so there were prophets who prophesied over cities now that also tells us cities and also nations uh, that tells us that mm, god has a plan okay god has a purpose for the nation god has a plan and a purpose for the city so uh, when a word comes this is what i am going to do in you in your midst it tells us that there is an intention for us to pray uh, align to for us to work in line with so god has a plan and a purpose just like he has a plan for uh, 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 an individual also for families right he told david uh, i'm going to do this you know there will you will not lack uh, someone on the throne so he had a plan and a purpose through david and his lineage his generations his families he had a plan in the same way for cities for communities for nations god has a plan god has a purpose so there are prophecies that are made over cities and nations then those cities that uh, responded even though they were sinful uh, if they responded they were forgiven so nineveh again is a good example where um, uh, you know there was a positive result but those that did not respond uh, to god pc judgment okay so going back to sodom and gomorrah they did not and they lived on in their sin and they were judged so that is also something we can keep in mind so if our city does not respond what will be the end result okay obviously we don't want judgment so which is why as god's people you and i we can pray and we can ask god for his mercy we can ask god for him to open up the hearts you remember in the last uh, session when we said that god we want people to be saved how to pray for them one of the ways is uh, that we say god you know you work in their hearts you uh, let the father draw them to himself so we can pray all these prayers and say lord you know you do a work you change the hearts of the people so that lord the sin which is there in our city it will be taken away and that your blessing will come upon us now uh, about the sins in the city again you know there is so much we can discuss noticeably right there are there are things that uh, get god's attention you know every sin is a sin for sure but then you know like when you talk about sodom and gomora we see that sexual immorality something that god he was like i just have to destroy that's it it's so corrupted the the hearts and the lives of the people judgment was like okay wipe it out wipe out those cities so you know there are these sins that uh, we can see god dealing with as you study about cities uh, so today for us right we're all from um, i think most of us are from cities here uh, and we are aware of the sins of our city right so what should it do to us you know it should really burden us that it's it's not like you know we, god is life is still going on it's normal things are functioning normally in the city what can go wrong nothing can go wrong but in the spiritual realm you know the way god looks at the city it's not that these things are going unnoticed it is coming up to god's knowledge but we as god's people you know, we have to pray and we have to cry out for mercy and say god we know we know all these evil things are going on but we pray that you know there will be repentance that you will open up the hearts of the people and lord instead of judgment that we will receive a visitation from you so in all these ways right we we just invite god to work in our hearts and help us uh, you know seek for the blessings upon the city so uh, cities and nations based on the response they are either forgiven or they uh, go through judgment and that is kind of scary for uh, for us now another thing that we can notice is that cities and nations um, we will see in the kingdom of of satan you know what he does to the natural kingdoms that exist okay on the earth we have nations what he does is parallelly he establishes his hierarchy so if there is a persia uh he has a prince of persia to interfere in the things of persia right so basically what is it basically demonic interference and regional
territorial uh, demonic influences are set up in the kingdom of uh, Satan because he wants to bring destruction in the cities just as much as God has a heart for the cities Satan has a heart for the cities God has a heart to bless he has a heart to destroy so he knows okay through these spirits these are the territorial spirits and if he has open doors if he has a you know a crack uh, to come through then he's more than happy to come in and cause damage or cause destruction in the cities so we notice that there are demonic principalities and principalities are like the rulers okay they are in charge of cities but there are again you know other spirits under them whom they will uh, employ to uh, cause destruction in the city. So what kind of things happen? You know, they can cause addictions. They can cause immorality. Okay, They can cause disobedience. They can cause violence. They can cause um, you know, poverty. They can cause diseases. Uh, so all kinds of things, oppression, you know, mental issues, any form of oppression they can cause. Right? So that's their job. What is, what is the job of satan steal kill and destroy so that is the assignment which these principalities have over cities over regions over communities so they are just out to destroy and we see that you know in in the book of daniel daniel chapter 10 when daniel prayed remember when we talked about persistence persevering in prayer uh, it took 21 days right for the answer to come to daniel god had sent it the very moment he prayed the answer was sent but what was stopping the answer from reaching Daniel? It was the principality over that region. So the angel comes to uh, Daniel later after 21 days with the answer and says, you know, who stopped? Who stopped me? It was um, the principality. Okay. Uh, but the prayers of Daniel, the intercession of Daniel, kind of, you could say, uh, allowed the angel to fight with these principalities so there are demonic principalities over regions we are also told in uh, revelation 2 13 you know, pergamos um just a moment let me just quickly check that reference Yeah, it's, it's about uh, a place called Pergamos where we are told that the uh, Satan has his throne. Okay, as if it was not good enough to know that there are principalities over cities. Uh, in this place called Pergamos, you know, Satan always tries to gain ground. And he has gained so much ground, we are told that he's sitting on a throne in the city. So what kind of a city was it? How destructive? How sinful? We don't know the details, but we're pretty clear that Satan was ruling and reigning over that land of Pergamos. Okay. So do we have demonic interference over cities? Yep, we do. And we should not ignore that. We should not ignore that. So while we are headed you know, towards bringing the kingdom of God, towards praying for revival, towards praying for, you know, God's spirit to be poured out, for uh, hearts to turn towards God, uh, repentance. You know, we are crying out for all these things. But at the same time, Satan, you know, he uh, very proactive. That's what we read in, in scriptures. You know, he's going about like a roaring lion, waiting, watching, whom can I devour? So he's actively working against cities he's working against groups of people he's working against communities to destroy so similar to what we said when we pray for the lost there are two aspects one is we pray and we say okay god you touch their lives you, know, you send people into their lives and bring them to yourself at the same time the other thing that we do is spiritual warfare because there is interference Okay, so I like to look at it like this. When we are watering the plants in our garden, if you're using a pipe, okay, we water them. So that's like prayer. We have to pray. Then the uh, growth will come. Okay, the results will come. But if there are holes in the pipe, we have to block that. Otherwise, what will happen? We are praying. 
no doubt we are we are doing our part but what is satan doing he has punched holes in the pipe so that is spiritual warfare where we recognize hey there is interference here i have to block it how do you block it you have to go against the enemy how do you go against the enemy use your uh, weapons of spiritual warfare take up your authority right take up all the uh, all the parts of the armor put on your armor engage in battle and uh, in that way we are plugging all the uh, those leaks so two aspects you pray and you also do spiritual warfare similarly coming to the cities when we are praying for the cities there is a very definite demonic influence okay later on we will see that while praying for cities can we pray at an individual level yes we can pray but it is better to pray in a collective way for the city so uh, that might mean that a couple of churches come together or many churches come together many church leaders come together and you pray that is very effective because there is the power of agreement in the hearts of the people okay uh, which uh, which is uh, you know incredible and especially when there is demonic interference when we pray collectively as the body of christ in the city it is extremely powerful so these are all aspects that we have to understand when we are talking about cities and um, how to pray for cities uh, so the point i was making so far is that satan has an interference he can have a small interference or he can have a huge interference like you know pergamos which is a stronghold so i just want to uh, also share uh, one city that that i had gone to it's here in uh, india only south india so i'd gone to one city and uh, i was told that you know they engage in a lot of you know certain kind of worship uh, it's a holiday uh, destination uh, but there is also all these centers where they practice a certain form of worship so when we went there with my family when i went there uh, i mean it was so real like i could sense the uh, you know some something about that place where uh, you know that there is a demonic influence over the place right so i am just giving you an example not that it should worry us or anything but it's real it's real uh, and for us it's not as believers we know our authority and i already shared how satan has been defeated he has been destroyed he has been evicted um, you know uh, so he has been dethroned so we are fighting a defeated enemy and again you know i shared how god and satan are not equals god is um, self existent eternal god satan is a finite created being so there is actually no comparison right between god and satan in that way so as believers when we understand all these truths and we notice demonic influence or interference we shouldn't get scared in fact we should be the ones who say hey i am carrying like you know how paul and the the missionaries they went to different cities wherever they went they were the ones who shone the light of god and they preached the gospel and people were saved and the glory of god came upon that city it came upon the land okay so we can in that way god jesus will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it so when you look at a gate of hell the gate of hell should get scared not us but i'm just telling you the strongholds of the enemy do exist and we must not ignore it you know satan he'll be happy if we ignore it because then he knows that we will not engage in the second aspect which is spiritual warfare we'll only pray and forget about it but there is demonic influence and we have to uh, just be aware basically be aware of it so i remember that uh, that particular place and uh, thinking that wow everything that i have learned in theory uh, these things are true these things are real and i must really pray for this place right so yeah that was from uh, my personal experience now god wants us his people to stand in the gap we've looked at so many old testament references where god said you know i am looking for one man to stand in the gap if my people who are called by my name you know seek my face uh, pray uh, and all of that right we we've seen all that the pray for the city where i have planted you uh, there's also psalm 28 which says ask of me and i will give the nations okay and i'll give you the like 
you know the people for your inheritance so god is giving us that privilege opportunity and authority to ask so that we can influence it could be um spiritual influence remember we talked about intercessors and we said that intercessors have a ministry which is important just because we may not know intercessors uh, and you know it's a very quiet sort of a, a ministry that god calls people to we should not think that they are insignificant but we have a very wonderful role to play so in prayer god is saying ask of me and i will give you the nations wow what a privilege we have as intercessors no uh, again you know just uh, it takes me back when i receive psalm 2 8 it takes me back to years ago as a, uh, a child in school you know when i was born again i remember uh, listening to this and um, thinking is it really possible that god can uh, take us to the nations that we can minister to the nations uh, and that day i was listening to a song Uh, those days you had the ta- tape recorder in which you know you put it and i had some of those tapes you know you put it again and again and again and you listen 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 till it tears so one of those tapes uh, and one of the nice songs um, which says ask of me i will give you the nations uh, and i was thinking and uh, i got like a picture in my in my mind like a vision where god was showing yeah it's possible uh, and it was as if i'm seeing people from different countries right uh, and uh, that uh, the god is able to give opportunities to minister to people from different countries you just pray about like you pray you ask and i will give you the nations so when i just like now when i look back right those days we never even knew that certain things are possible just just think about it now you know we are here with the internet and this a uh, class online class and people are connecting from different nations uh, so it it's all to amazing the way god works and just for me in a personal way i feel like wow one prayer god yeah we are asking for the nations we are asking for india we are asking for you know uh, some of the nations may be listed here represented here uh, ghana uh, right different nations god takes all these prayers very seriously and that's that's the point i wanted to make you know i i sense that in my own life in my own journey that uh, it's all serious <laughs> we think that how will it happen but god has a way of doing these things we just have to be sincere and he says okay pray for your city pray for the nation he can make us an influence now i don't know in which way maybe some of us will end up being preachers and teachers and all but even if it's not out there before the people just that ministry of intercession it's so powerful you know in that we are able to see god's work upon the nation in that way god can give the nation to us isn't it i i one more incident i remember this was uh, a group of people who pray for the nation pray for india uh, and they've been praying for many many years and uh, i had the opportunity to be a part of um, a conference where the the leader of that ministry like he came to preach in one of the sessions and you know he he talked about the nation he talked about a burden for the nation praying for the nation along the lines of his ministry only but you know the 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 way the presence of god took it was a large gathering there were thousands of people in that gathering but when he began to minister we could sense the presence of god right like and what is what was his you know one of the primary things intercession and we wouldn't think that oh okay uh, you know he will he like you get what i'm saying right even as an intercessor like we could just sense the presence of god upon his life and that ministry that was praying for the nation for years so basically i'm just trying to say whether it is um, in a notable way or public way uh, or even if nobody ever comes to know that we are praying we ha- god has called us for this ministry of intercession don't doubt the influence that we can have through our prayers over 
groups of people communities of people you know over uh, cities over regions and it is a great blessing so uh, pray and ask god if he burdens you for a region you say god i don't know how you're going to use me but i'm saying yes ask of me i will give you the nations i'm just asking lord my job is to uh, have a heart like a child and say okay god you do it and that's all just do it and who are we to say how god is going to lead us to bless nations and uh, people groups and earlier you know what i touched on and i said that we are the ones who are victorious and we are here to go against the gates of hell and jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against us so why are we still here on the earth believers children of god to bring the kingdom of god on the earth in our city we can pray and we can say lord let your kingdom come you remember when we prayed for the family we said okay lord let your kingdom come in my spouse's life let it come in my child's life in my family we can also say god let your kingdom come in my city let it overtake everything the sin that is happening in my city the injustice that is happening in my city lord Jesus taught us to pray thy kingdom come thy will be done and we as god's people as we cry out you know god will hear our prayers and he wants people to do that he wants us to pray for our city he wants us to pray for our region so you know this is a really beautiful um study what we will do is we will continue with it tomorrow we'll touch some more on you know how to pray for the city and all that so let me just pause here and uh, leave this time open anything you want to add or you know testimony you want to share or a um, comment question feel free feel free to do that yeah i i hope um, it's you know you're getting something out of this okay yeah sure yes uh, uh, yes nikolson go ahead yeah thank you thank you class uh hello pastor nice to see you have a few questions yes, yes. One, one is i'm yeah, sorry sure. to put you in the spot but i just wanted to know no, no. after that trip in mysore did you all huh. have a follow up and know if there was any change in the city and mm, uh, mm. that is one question mm, the other mm. one is you had mentioned last time that fasting and prayers to build faith so okay, mm. i just wanted to uh, like what we fast and pray for deliverance of cities also and people so is that correct as well so this is a yeah, yeah. question Yes, yes, sure, uh, Nicholson. Thank you for the two questions here. Uh, yeah, the first one: Did we follow up and did we see a change? Uh, in fact, we'll talk about it later. When it comes to cities, uh, I think it was a good beginning, uh, Nicholson. Uh, I I know that since like after that, uh, people were just open to this kind of intercession. and uh, in that particular meeting uh, many pastors and leaders had come together so it it was one of its kind that wouldn't happen in the city a lot so by itself as an event and a program uh, it it broke ground and uh, uh, but to go back and check on the specifics of whether you know whether um, something changed you know let's i'm just simply saying if there is a uh, crime in the city if crime went down we we haven't followed up in that manner and also uh, when it comes to cities and praying for cities you know sometimes for us to see the impact it takes a while we have to engage for a uh, certain period of time so yeah definite change like notable change i can't tell you that we have seen uh, we have seen that or we have checked for that but we know from the testimonies we heard we we know that people were awakened to this kind of uh, uh, prayer and intercession so that much information i have okay so i i hope that helps yeah thank you yeah thank sure you. Yeah. the second one yeah the second one so you're saying that um fasting does fasting help and is it is it required yes yes 
Yes. Yeah. Sure, uh, uh, Nicholson. For for any interceding for anything that God burdens us with, when we you know want to pray with greater faith, fasting always helps. And um, not right now, but in the next class, I'll try to share some examples from uh, the world around us where people have fasted and prayed. Okay, and they have seen an impact. Uh, even when we talked about uh, Father Nash, you know, you remember in Charles Finney's ministry, uh, they would go and travelling prayer. Many of those teams that went out to pray for cities and regions, they would engage in fasting. And a lot of revivals also. If you if you study the revivals, there is definitely an element of fasting, right? In in uh, many of them. Now, fasting by itself. we are going to study it and understand you know what is it and all mm, uh yeah it, it's not to say that only if you fast you are going to see a, a revival no it doesn't work like that but is fasting associated with praying for the city and the breakthroughs that come very much and i'll give you some specific examples in the next class thank you so much Yeah, sure. No problem. Thank you so much. Good questions there. Uh, anything? Any other questions? All right. Um, so what we can do is just mull over these things, and if you have the time, go through the notes. We'll continue from here. And if you have anything to clarify on the same topic, we can do that tomorrow. So let's close right now. We will close with a word of prayer. Uh, I would like to request uh, someone to lead us in prayer. Anyone, please feel free jump in and pray. Ah yes, yes, it can. You opened it and you're closing it. That's great. Yeah, I, I really appreciate your uh, enthusiasm. Yeah, go ahead, please. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the session, Lord. As we have learned about praying for our city, Lord, we all the students who are here, Lord, we are surrendering our cities in your hand, Lord. Do whatever as you have planned for our cities, Lord. We pray for the city of Bangalore. We pray for the city of Delhi and whatever and whichever places you, Lord, we are from, Lord. we give it into your hand lord do as you have planned for the city lord do as you have planned lord in our lives lord we bow down in front of your presence lord thank you for this day lord whatever we have learned let it should be visible to us and we should make an example for others to believe in lord in jesus name we pray amen 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 man thank you sitkenu thank you everyone god bless you have a wonderful day we meet again tomorrow take care Bye for now. Praise the Lord, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bye. God bless you.